Welcome back to my channel. We are nearing the end of harvest season. My generous neighbors gave me the opportunity to come and pick loads of sun-ripened tomatoes. <laughs> and there were plenty to be had. So today I wanna to share with you guys some garden fresh tomato recipes. When I first got married, my grandmother gave me two cookbooks. One of them was the Ball Blue Book for canning and preserving. If you're a beginner with canning and preserving, it's great to have some education or guide to teach you all the healthy guidelines for preserving and canning especially. Or even if you're a well-seasoned preserver, it's nice to have an index full of recipes and ideas so I'll put an affiliate link down below so you can find this exact one. Oh boy, oh boy, there are so many tomatoes and I need to come up with something to do with these tomatoes today because they really are better if you get to them right away. They really don't last long. They've been on the vines ripening in the sun for quite some time and they're ready to be used. So the first thing that I'm going to do is prepare some fire roasted salsa. I made some of this earlier on in the summer and my family ate all of it already. And so I need to make a lot more. I don't follow an exact recipe for this salsa. I just take all of my salsa experience and watching what my mom did and throw it all together. I am going to start out by putting some onions and peppers right here on the grill. I have a nice broiling option on my grill and get it nice and toasted and blackened. I'm gonna use all of my large tomatoes for this recipe and I'm going to use about two cookie sheets full of large tomatoes and put those in the broiler as well. If you're wondering, there's about six or seven garden fresh peppers here and a couple jalapenos and about five to six medium-sized onions as well. I love having them on the grill. It makes them so smoky. And I broil the tomatoes for about 20 minutes, just until the skin is nice and wrinkly and a little bit blackened. That way, if you wanna peel the skin off, it comes off really easily but I'm just gonna throw it all in the blender. At this point, it really doesn't matter what sequence you blend it, you just keep throwing it all in the blender and it all is going to the same place. And you can do it longer or shorter, depending on how you like the consistency. And of course you have to add garlic, so I'm gonna throw in maybe six to seven cloves of garlic here and chopping up some cilantro as well. Just one bunch. Go ahead and squeeze two to four limes. That's probably about two to four tablespoons of lime juice in here and two tablespoons of salt. And then you should definitely taste it to make sure all of your flavors are balanced. Well, I do see a cup. How does it taste? This is the best salsa. 
I've had. Hey, Mom. In 10 years. <laughs> hey, Mom. Jaden, you're 10 years old. Yep. <laughs> So in preparation for the hot water bath, I always put my jars in the water while it's heating up, make sure they're nice and hot and sterilized beforehand. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour in all the salsa and of course leave about one fourth an inch at least headspace. I also put all of my salsa into that pot and put it on the stove and brought it up to heat um, to a low simmer so that the food was hot as it went into the hot jars and, um, and hot while it goes into the hot water bath. This is my way of avoiding as many accidents as possible, um, but of course it is possible sometimes for an old jar to break. There's nothing worse than seeing your food floating around in the water. That's not a good sign. The processing time depends on your elevation, so make sure to check that as well. That's another good reason to have the ball book around. It can tell you how long certain recipes need to be processed for for certain elevations. Okay, so for the rest of these tomatoes, I decided to put them in the broiler and peel the skins off of them and put them in a container and save them for the next day. In a world of convenience, when you can buy anything from the store, what is the point of preserving your own food these days? I would like to know what some of your thoughts are. So type it in the comments down below, share some of your thoughts. I'd love to know what your take is on food preservation. With the rest of these tomatoes, I am going to make some garden fresh tomato soup. If you've been looking for a simple and quick tomato soup recipe that doesn't come out all chunky with all the seeds and all the textures, then this one is for you. I've got it down to a T. Start out by dicing one onion and two to three cloves of garlic and sauteing in some butter or olive oil. I'm also going to throw in a zucchini because zucchini just happens to be in almost everything we eat these days and it's kind of like the invisible vegetable. I'm going to use about four cups of stewed tomatoes or boiled tomatoes for this recipe and the rest of it I'm going to store away in some freezer containers to use in the future for spaghetti sauces and soups or stews, chilies, whatever it is. If you need some ideas on what to do with all of your zucchini or summer squash, check out my video on summer squash and what to do with it. I've got some ideas for you. Next, we're gonna add one to two teaspoons of salt, about a cup to two cups of water, and some basil. If you have fresh basil, go with the fresh basil. It's always better fresh. And add about two tablespoons of brown sugar and let it all simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes. And throw it all in the blender for at least a few minutes. You want it to be nice and pureed. Uh, 
Um, definitely make sure that you have your lid on really secure. Look at this big mess I just made. <gasps> oh my gosh. The little spout just flew right up and splattered all over my countertop. And splashed all over. We're not going for perfection, right? Just almost. Almost perfection. <laughs> In order to get that perfect creamy tomato soup texture, pour your soup through a metal strainer and really work all of that nice puree through the strainer. You want to have all the good stuff and what's left is really the seeds and the skins and for those in your family who might be sensitive about textures, that's perfect for them. And to top it off, add a cup of cream. I am serving our tomato soup with my Irish soda bread recipe. It's buttery and it's rich and you can find it here on the channel as well. Look forward to part two of fresh garden tomatoes. I'm gonna to show you what I'm gonna do with those cherry tomatoes. Love you lots.